Why is this standing? Let's why is this standing? Let's please invite our Reverend Father Professor uh, Oge 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 to come and use opening prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for bringing us here together. We have come to share the fruit of knowledge, the result of hard work, research, and the quest to unravel nature, which we have created. We thank you for the gift of this university. We thank you for the professors, for the lecturers, for the students. We thank you for our administration, the Vice Chancellor. We thank you in a special way today for Professor, Professor Titus Tukuyanuku, who is taking a special step in his academic career. Be with him as we listen to him, enlighten our minds by participating in this inaugural lecture. May we be endowed with the type of knowledge that will enable us to go into the world, transform the world positively and give glory to your name in whatever we do through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father. Thank you. May open please have our seats. Uh, because of time, we will not be able to recognize all the dignitaries in this place this morning. Of course, our dear Vice Chancellor is already seated. Professor Charles Okechi, Grace Money, FAS, the sixth uh, Vice Chancellor of this great institution, and uh, several others. The inaugural lecture committee chair is also seated, and the well have provost of the College of uh, Medicine, Nehu. So please, because of time, we will not be able to introduce all, but we know that several people are here seated, and uh, it will be a wonderful day in this inaugural lecture of today. So without wasting much of our time, we want to invite our dear digital vice chancellor for his opening remarks. Thank you very much. The Provost College of Health Sciences, other deans in the Faculty of uh, Medicine and Basic Medical Sciences, and other deans of faculties who are present here, the Chairman Inaugural Lecture Series, the Middle Past Director of uh, School of General Studies, uh, Professor, Reverend Father Professor Obi Ogwe Jofo, and then in a very special way, the 71st Inaugural Lecturer and your dear wife, uh, ladies and gentlemen, especially the in-laws and the uh, uh, friends of Professor Titus Tukwanuku. I have uh, seen all of you. And in a special way, our virtual audience. Uh, I want to say good morning and uh, I welcome us in a special way uh, to this very, very wonderful uh, uh, occasion. This is the 71st inaugural lecture of our great university, Namdia Sikyo University. And as we know, uh, for the past one year or so, uh, we have uh, experienced a great revolution in terms of the number, in terms of the quality of our inaugural lectures, because we have adopted the virtual mode of uh, presentation. And today will not be an exception. I've always made this remark that we have much more audience uh, virtually than we have uh, physically. And so by virtue of this innovation, our contribution to knowledge and what we profess and what academia is supposed to be representing is streamed worldwide. People from, from all over, from Europe, from America, from Asia, uh, they have been privy to the wealth of knowledge that we share here at Namda Zikwe University. And today we are looking forward to a very excellent presentation again, because the professor who is coming up is a professor of no mean repute. We know that surgeons, they know how to uh, surgically uh, cut things very short, but we're also ex expecting that by the wealth of knowledge that we're going to disseminate here this uh, morning, uh, that we're more endowed in a special way. Uh, we don't have much time, as uh, the protocol person has said, so we're just looking forward to an exciting time uh, in uh, the next uh, uh, one hour, so to say. So I welcome us all to relax and enjoy the beautiful lecture. Thank you and God bless you all.
Thank you very much, uh, dear Vice Chancellor. Next is, uh, I want to invite Associate Professor Afia Digwe for the citation on the inaugural. Um, Mr. Vice Chancellor and Chairman of this lecture, I want to stand on the already established protocol for want of time. I will go ahead to present uh, my friend, Professor Tioji Chukwanugu. Uh, he has already known that he has to stand up and uh, he's standing. He is um, Professor Tukwanuku Titus Osita Gabriel was born to the family of late Pa Felix and Mrs. Bridget Tukwanuku, precisely on 26th March 1965 at uh, Ivite Mako. He had a very humble beginning and uh, started his uh, uh, studies at the Central School Mako, gained entrance into the secondary school, or go secondary school, high school, and graduated. Immediately, he started nursing the idea to go into healthcare. And this made him go into the School of Health Technology, OG, where he banked the pharmacy technician certificate. And it was this exposure that spurred him into taking to the study of medicine. And uh, he gained admission into the then young Nandia Zikwe University. So, and um, he was a very hardworking, focused and disciplined um, uh, student. And these efforts were rewarded by the award of MBBS in the year uh, 1997. Is actually one of the first few graduates, the third batch, actually. And then uh, since then, Dr. Anuku has always shown leadership. In pursuance of academic excellence, he opted to go into the job of teaching in the college. He applied and was employed as a lecturer too in anatomy. That was at the time, very few people would want to go back to school in the classroom, you know, from the medical profession. He went there because of his uh, interest in teaching and educating others. He took his job very in, uh, passionately and enthusiastically and his quest for medical practice continued. And that made him to apply to Nandazikiwe University Teaching Hospital as his primary residence in um, plastic surgery. I had his training in Nandas Green Teaching Hospital, and his senior residency training was at Automatic Hospital in um, Nenugu. His, um, the stay at both centers were very interesting. He showed uh, his skill, and uh, he proved his mantle in clinical skills, in research, and in interpersonal relationship. It was both that brought him the award of the Fellowship of the West African College of Surgeons in Plastic Surgery in 2006. And uh, since then, he was now appointed a consultant, black surgeon in Nandas University, honorary consultant. In that capacity, the college now converted his appointment to lecturer in both anatomy and uh, surgery in 2007. He was admitted into the College of International Surgeons in Nigeria section in 2012. He has been working hard and uh, has grown steadily and risen to the post of a uh, full professor of Nandazikwe University in uh, 1st October 2026. Creative output. The, I recall that in those days, uh, school days, Professor Chukwanuku 
then called Ogatai. That's how everyone knows him. I am sure that a lot of our colleagues are watching virtually and they will understand when I use this name, Ogatai. He, he, he was the, the president of uh, the, NEN, the research organization of the students, Mestreso, and he was the first editor in chief. That was when his uh, research and uh, publication started. And as a student, he published his first paper in a, a tropical journal of medical uh, practice in, um, uh, two, uh, in white, white city student. And uh, since then, he has continued to develop his skills in um, writing and publication. The presently, he contributed four papers, four chapters in different books, and has published more than 40 peer-reviewed articles in various journals, both local and international. He has presented numerous papers in different conferences and has traveled almost all over the world you know, um, presenting papers. He has attracted grants, especially my train grant for equipment and the travel grant UICC in 2012. Like I mentioned, Professor Chuan who started his editorial career as a student. And uh, he was sub-editor College of Voice, uh, College Voice, which was the official publication of the College of Health Sciences. He later became the editor in chief in 2019 and um, continued. He became the sub-editor surgery in uh, to the Nigerian Journal of Clinical Practice, which is uh, arguably about the best uh, medical journal in Nigeria and the most highly rated. He became deputy editor-in-chief of the same journal. And uh, in 2021, he stepped into the shoe of uh, our, the former editor, Professor SNC Anyang, who actually tutored him well. And uh, today he's the editor in chief of that journal. He's currently, he's currently the co chairman of Nandazikwe University Academic Research Journal Publication Development Committee, chaired by the DVC admin. He's a reviewer to various uh, journals, namely World Journal of Surgical Oncology, Nigerian Journal of Surgery, Nigerian Journal of Clinical Practice, and also Ring Journal of Medicine. Postgraduate supervision, he has supervised one MSc dissertation and two fellowship, two fellowship candidates to completion, and currently uh, supervising several other postgraduate researches. Professor Titus Chugu started leadership by, as a student, and um, then he was actually the second uh, president of NFCS and contributed significantly to the establishment of the Knight Chaplaincy. Uh, he has so many other leadership positions, but I want to say that he was actually the class leader of the group A of his uh, class and continued leadership till end of their course. And that means that he had the trust and confidence of his uh, colleagues. Upon assumption of duty as an consultant, plastic surgeon, he became the head bones plastic reconstruction surgery unit of the Department of Surgery in Nandazigo University Teaching Hospitals from 2007 to date. And I want to say that over a period of more than five years, he was the only consultant surgeon, plastic surgeon in the teaching hospital with so many patients and nobody has complained that he was not taken care of because he was alone. He was said and consultant in charge my train free surgeries. This smile train program has taken Chukwanuku to various communities in Anambra State where they fished out people who have facial defects and they have actually had them repaid at no cost to the parents. In fact, I recall very particularly a man that asked, the daughter was already an adolescent and he was asked to come and do surgery. And the man was asking, will I pay a dime? Because the man wasn't ready to pay even one naira. He has already grown to know that the, the child was deformed. And so, but eventually he didn't pay and that reconstruction took place. He had been faculty so in Senate, deputy director, head of government of surgery currently. The other things you can find in that um, list. In fact, he is actually a demonstration of the fact that the reward of good work is more work. Unfortunately, they say that men die of boredom, psychological conflict and disease. They do not die of uh, hard work. That's David Ugly. And that's the truth because the way this young man standing here works, you just think that he was going to die the following day. But he never gives up and he actually succeeds in all. As an excellent leader, he believes in Jim Rohn's philosophy that a good objective of a leadership is to help those who are doing poorly to do well and to help those 
who are doing well to do even better. That's actually his watchword. And that's why he believes that every student can make it. Most students, the poor, the strong, and they all know that he can always come to him. He believes only that some people need more attention. And that, that has actually guided his um, establishment. He has been in those uh, committees and board listed there. Contribution to university and society. Uh, also, they, he has contributed immensely to the Nigerian Medical Association, the Medical and Dental Consultants of Nigeria, UNISIC alumni. Of, he's actually the vice president of the UNISIC Alumni Association and um, the Catholic Church, the University and Society at large. And these we are, are, are listed below. I don't want to bore you. Yeah, I want to tell you that um, he has actually been the PRO of NMA Anambra State 2008 to 2010, and was State Secretary of NMA 2010 to 2012. Financial Secretary, PRO, General Secretary, MD Khan Nayut, and eventually became the National Public Secretary MD Khan. And currently is the National Vice President of Music Media Association. A Professor T has been rewarded by so many organizations, but I want to mention that he had the Provost Merit Award in 2009 and 2010 consecutively. Yeah, NJCP Award of Excellence for Outstanding Contribution, May 2021, is the Patron Abino Foundation, TF, TF Anambra State. Numerous other awards, too many to mention here. Is uh, also a traditional title holder. That's an aspect many of us don't know. Is a boy if you host the Mawan of Ipitema. So he's actually not just talking grammar and going outside. He is also recognized even at home. He is a member of Ladies and gentlemen, behold the first medical alumni to present an inaugural lecture in Nayu. The first medical alumni to present. So this one, Bunkani, is homegrown. And Nayu can actually boast that they've got us up to this point. And we thank the Vice Chancellor for making things continue to happen. This is a humble teacher and a researcher. Is an accomplished plastic surgeon. Okay, as a what happened? Okay, all right. Is a accomplished plastic surgeon, a true husband, a very caring one at that, a lovely father, and a very focused researcher and teacher. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to present to you Professor T. O. G. Chukwanuku a man of many parts and the efficiency is what we know from all those parts. I present to you a man you can depend on, a man you can give an assignment and go and sleep. I present to you a friend and a brother, Professor Tioji. Thank you. My vice chancellor, sir, time may not allow me to say everything I want to say, but um, I want to recognize a few people here. Uru Kanachupu is a very close friend of mine. Obuefi, too, and um, I feel very happy presenting this inaugural lecture under his administration. So he announced my professorship. So I want to thank him again. I think this is maybe the second person 
that he announced the proposal to present in an inaugural lecture in his administration. So project 200 is actually on course and uh, we'll continue to do our best to move it to higher grounds. The pro-chancellor, Namda Zikori University, the vice chancellor, deputy vice chancellors, present and uh, former, I can see my good friend. Thank you very much for honoring the invitation. Yes, sir. He played significant roles in our growth in this university. And uh, we can't thank him enough. I learned a lot under um, Professor Reverend Father J. Obi for when I served under him. And I thank you for honoring my invitation. I want to thank my provost, a special friend of mine, who has encouraged me. In fact, I must say that um, the first international conference I attended in Switzerland, just soon after becoming a consultant, he helped me a lot and encouraged me a lot. My salary for two months salary could not carry me to that conference. And uh, I just discussed with him and uh, he did the need for that enabled me to attend that conference. <laughs> Professor Odewe, I want to thank you again. My Dean, Professor Obiumosu, I'm happy you are here. My mother is here. That's the, the, the womb that brought me forth into this uh, world. My younger brothers are here, engineer hygienists. My in-laws are here. My father-in-law and mother-in-law. Please, let me not bore you with long introductions because of time and uh, we are running against time. But I want to also recognize other people here and the virtual audience. I want to also recognize the gentlemen of the press and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Like my brother, my unique brother stated, Associate Professor E.A. Iafedigo, from today, I have become the first medical graduate of UNIZIC to present an inaugural lecture. The second from the Department of Surgery, the seventh from the Faculty of Medicine, and the tenth from the College of Health Sciences. An inaugural lecture is actually the avenue for the university to announce to the world that an academic has been elevated to the coveted position of a full professor. We now have a chair in the university. He then informs the larger community what he has done to merit that uh, position. He is then fully qualified for higher academic and community service. You can contrast this with a evaluatory lecture, which is actually a farewell address. When you have completed your duty and you are going, you now reel out your experiences and advise those coming behind you on what they're supposed to do. So inaugural lecture is actually supposed to come early enough in the career of the professor. And I want to again thank the vice chancellor who has made it possible for us to present inaugural lectures every two weeks. I want to also thank my chairman who also insists with members as Professor Nwani, thank you very much. And our secretary, we work tirelessly day and night to ensure that no gap is created. Indeed, there was a gap and I was called upon to fill that gap and given a short period to fill that gap. Being a member of this committee and the knowing what our vice chancellor indeed will want, we wouldn't want this to be broken. I took up the challenge and um, I hope I will be able to do justice to that. I was actually born close to the Civil War and fought that war on the back of my late uncle as he carried me from here and there as we were hiding from one bush to the other from the enemies. 
My father was a military officer, so he was deeply involved in depend, defending his nation. I've been in the Nigerian army and then uh, the Biafran army. So he was busy defending us and I thank him for that sacrifice. Otherwise we would have all been consumed now. I started actually from the primary school in my village, which uh, was an a part of uh, the central school, Udechuku Memorial Primary School in Kitemuako, in the local government area of Enugu State. The motto of that school is to excel and not to compete. When I grew to understand the full meaning of that, I adopted it as my personal motto, that we should all aspire to excel and not to compete. I had my secondary school education at Oku High School, Neungwe, and my, there I served as animal farm prefect. Then found myself at School of Health Technology, Oji River, where I did the first technician's course and worked with that for some time and actually had interest in pharmacy and wanted to read pharmacy. But by the divine providence, I came into medicine. Of course, at that time, there was no medicine, no pharmacy in UNICEF. And uh, my father, I still thank him for the trick he played to get me into UNICEF to read medicine. I then completed medical training in 1997 and uh, immediately joined the staff of uh, UNICEF in anatomy department. Rolled into residency training and uh, completed that in 2006 and obtained that fellowship of the International College of Surgeons in 2012. Thereafter, I have attended several courses to improve my skills. I was first attracted to plastic surgery during our posting to the National Tropical Hospital in Enugu, because during that early stages, we used to go to Enugu to do our postings in plastic, uh, neurosurgery, ENT, and the rest. The work ethics there was quite impressive. By 7.30 a.m., the, even the medical director was already in the hospital. And we walked till late in the evening. So I got attracted to that, and it remained with me. So who is the plastic surgeon? The term plastic actually is from the Greek word plasticos, meaning fit to mold or fit for molding. So it's a sub specialty of surgery that deals with shaping and reshaping, molding and beautifying different parts of the body. So we deal with reconstruction and restoration to those parts of the body that have been injured or lost or damaged by tumors and diseases. The plastic surgeon is preoccupied with the duty of restoring form and function to body parts while concealing blemishes and scars so as you are doing that, you also want to hide the, your entrance point. That is very, very important in our practice. So why this constructive aspect tries to rebuild and improve the functional part, but the cosmetic part, which is aesthetic surgery, tends to improve its appearance. And many people confuse plastic surgery as aesthetic surgery. Why aesthetic surgery is actually just a part, about just one seventh of the work of the plastic uh, surgeon. The procession indeed must have a unique blend of basic medical knowledge. You must know your anatomy very well. And uh, my surgeon in anatomy helped me a lot as I'm going to reel out further. You must have surgical judgment. When do you go in? When do you not go in? Technical expertise, ethics, and good interpersonal relationship skills. Because quite a number of these patients coming to you may have other problems. In fact, sometimes, most times, if they are coming purely for aesthetic uh, surgery, we send them to the mental health physicians and sometimes the psychologists to be sure that they're not looking for what you cannot uh, offer. And we also sit down with the patients to discuss the eventual outcome and what we can offer. So we don't uh, allow them to have uh, so much expectation from us. He must be a patient person and must be pay meticulous attention to details. He must have the heart of an, of a, uh, an eye of an eagle, but the heart of gold. 
Actually, he must know how to rob Peter to pay Paul. But Peter must remain relatively unharmed. Uh, that is where knowledge of anatomy must come in. You must know those expendable parts of the body that you can harvest for your reconstruction or repay without causing harm or dysfunction to that aspect. And uh, our assessions in anatomy, we were able to identify several uh, accessory body parts. And we published that in many, many journals that can be used for transfer and the reconstruction in different parts of the body. The scope is quite wide. Indeed, the plastic works from head to toe, not referring to any anatomy part of the body. He indeed is the regenerator surgeon, Megas. The plastic surgeon is the regenerator surgeon because he's the one that works from head to toe and also works with every other doctor in reconstruction and other repairs. From congenital anomalies to acquired defects to tumors to aesthetics, even when one feels that it's good, some people want to improve on their outlook. But in Nigeria, we are faced with a lot of problems and challenges. The awareness is still very low, even among medical doctors. A study I conducted uh, in 2011 showed that even among our own colleagues, they are not all aware of those cases that should be referred to the plastic surgery unit. And that has actually made referral uh, come very late with poor outcomes. But when they come in early, the outcome is usually very, very good. I hope that at the end of this lecture, there will be an improvement in the knowledge of the scope of plastic surgery so that our people can begin to benefit maximally from our services. Well, we know our faces. We are identified by our faces. And it is very key and a very important functional and aesthetic part of our body. We express our emotions and communicate by the face. We identify that even identical twins can always be distinguished by those who are close to them. That tells you how important our faces are. And uh, we make our signs, our eye signs, our mouth signs with the, uh, these are housed in the face. The leap is also very important. And that's why reconstructive surgeries in these areas are very, very important. Of course, the important how, uh, sense organs are in the face and they can also be involved in any of these uh, deformities we are talking about. Congenital anomalies of the face are difficult to hide and they cause significant morbidity. It may not cause significant mortality, but the morbidity is usually uh, very, very high and people don't tend to fit into the society once they have a deformed face. The amount of money we spent on cosmetics of the face is far greater than what we spend for the rest of the body. Of course, um, the women here will tell us more on this. The face develops actually from the fourth week to the, by the 12th week of intrauterine life. So most times, even before the woman is aware that she's pregnant, the face has already taken form. And that is where we have some problems. I'm going to uh, say this uh, later. I won't bother you with this, but suffice it to say that we have a primitive mouth called the stomodium, around which we have five major prominences from the second pharyngeal arch. The frontonasal coming from the superior part to uh, maxillary, superior to it, and two mandibular. They all come together, circling the primitive mouth. And from there, the face develops. The secondary palate also develops from the palatal shelves, which initially lie horizontally. But then by the seventh week, they begin to lie uh, horizontally and begin to merge. By the 12th week, the palate has formed. So by 12 weeks, we already have a formed mouth and nose. So already a human being has uh, been formed by 12th week of intrauterine life. That palate is the roof of the mouth, separating it from the nasal cavity and plays significant roles both in feeding and in speech. 
several factors play roles in this development of the phase and interruption in any of them can lead to problems which we are going to see non-fusion of parts breakdown of fused parts missing parts misplacement of parts abnormal sizes and shapes and indeed to manage this you need to have a sound knowledge of the anatomy how did this form and then psychology of facial defects the plastic surgeon therefore needs to apply his uh, knowledge of developmental anatomy which is embryology functional anatomy of the area and then the aesthetic units of the face because as we're looking at the face different, different parts of the face are divided into aesthetic units and you can move one part to the other the age and sex influences and emotional state of the individual are important so the battered face of nigeria for us to reconstruct the battered face of nigeria we also need that sound knowledge of the plastic surgeon how did we get to where we are today which is the developmental anatomy that we discuss what are the duties of each person the functional anatomy various organs of the government what are they supposed to do are they doing it uh, how are they supposed to do it better what are the desired outcome and what are the effects of the current state of affairs on the citizenry at times the nation appear not to care about how the people are feeling which is which is uh, regrettable the most common congenital anomaly of uh, the face is um, cleft lip and cleft palate the incidence uh, differs from race to race, from geographical location to geographical location. Presentation can be quite frightening, but management can be simple in parentheses. Because when the expert is handling it, it becomes simple. But you must pay attention to these details I mentioned earlier. When it is only the leaps that are informed, that are involved, then cosmetic concerns become very, very important. Of course, the, young, the newborn baby does not even know how he or she looks. So the emotion of the parents, you need to manage that too. But when the palate is also involved, then a lot of problems follow, including feeding difficulties, leading to malnutrition, growth retardation and death, recurrent upper retract infection, speech impairment, mid-face hypoplasia and dental problems can involve both the eye, the ear, and other parts of the face. And there could be other associated congenital. Many are killed at death, at birth, and many are abandoned. I have seen many of that. In fact, the day I started that program in teaching hospital, a child was delivered at Onisha three days earlier. Because the child had bilateral cleft and palate, the parents were advised not to breastfeed her because the child would come back if uh, breastfed or banje. And that child was almost starved to death. The matron who is related to the woman called me to ask, I said, please bring that child over. They brought the child over to a skibu bed. For three days, the child that was delivered had not taken water or anything. But that we couldn't make it. So it is a very important uh, issue. I have seen many families separated or divorced because of child born with cleft and cleft palate. It is worse when you have isolated cleft palate. In that case, the face will be looking normal. Then the child may not be able to suck. And most times you have a quarrel between the, the new wife the wife and the mother-in-law because uh, this woman doesn't want her breast to suck that's why she doesn't want to breastfeed the child while the woman was making efforts this has led to separation in families and i have seen many of such a lot of factors play a role both genetic and exogenous factors genetic more than 50 percent of palate can run in families i'm going to show some of them here and that's where the belief that if that child is breastfed it will come back come in they don't know the genetic uh, components. But again, some of the things we take, folic acid is important at this early stage of life. And some drugs can interfere, both those that will interfere with folate metabolism and those that will interfere 
with other developmental things. So by the time the woman is even aware that she's pregnant, she has taken several drugs. Of course, during early that period when they have uh, their nausea and the vomiting, they'll be taking all sorts of things, thinking that it's malaria. This can all contribute to development of, uh, so both genetic and uh, environmental factors can play roles. We conducted a hospital-based study, which we published in 2021 to establish the incidence in this part of the world. So that we don't need to depend on what others publish in their own region. And we have established that 0 0.8 to 1,000 life beds in our environment. Like I mentioned, special aesthetic units, these areas are handled differently. The forehead, the nose, the eyelids, the cheek, upper and lower lips, the chin, the ears, the scalp, they're all major aesthetic units in the body. These are also divided into multiple subunits for reconstructive purposes. For instance, the upper eyelid is not handled the same way as the lower eyelid. Why most times we prefer a split thickness graft for the upper eyelid defect? Because it's a very mobile structure. We go more for the full thickness for the lower eyelid. And the lateral cantus is not handled the same way as the medial cantus. So all these are important if you are going to make the mark. And don't forget that you need to conceal the blemishes as much as uh, possible. In youth, these special aesthetic units flow together without perceptible division. The face usually appears as a single dynamic structure with smooth contour and very little shadowing between the anatomical planes. However, when we start aging, the facial aesthetic units slowly become distinct due to differences in the skin thickness, composition of subcutaneous tissue, contour of the facial skeleton, and location of facial ligaments. Due to hiding of scars, therefore, is better in the elderly, where you have some wrinkles that you can use to hide your scar than in the young age where the wrinkles are not yet uh, there. So if you are going to work on a young person, you must have to plan well, knowing that they easily go into depression once you leave an un uh, unacceptable scar behind. We also manage several complex orofacial injuries. When they have road traffic accidents, gunshot injuries, they present in very bad shape. Some will have total compromise of the airway. You must manage that immediately. There may also be uh, traumatic brain injuries, the facial fracture, the soft tissue displacements and disfigurements. Sometimes the entire nose may be completely cut off or just be hurt by a little ligament. And uh, also, when we fight, uh, most times uh, we go to bite those areas that are closest to us. We're going to see some of the pictures. And the reconstruction is also important. Husband and wife, market women, touts, uh, these are things we see. We, are, we conducted a study to look at the outcome of management of uh, these facial, traumatic facial injuries. I worked with the neurosurgeons, with the, with the ENT surgeons, my professional surgeon, dental surgeons. And in the teaching hospital, we have a good mix of these specialists. So when we reviewed the outcome of our work over a 12 month period, we found that it is important that these patients are referred to these centers early. By the time we work together, most of them are restored to near normal, as near normal as uh, possible. And when they have parasympathetic mandibular fractures, the tongue usually falls back to block the airway. So that person that sees them at the first time can do a lot. We devised a means where we attach a tongue, uh, just a string on the tongue and pull it off because once there are multiple facial fractures, the tongue will fall back and block the airway. Patient may be struggling to get up so as to open up the airway. Those be around him will be trying to force him down that is because of head injury. And I had an incident when I was a senior at Enugu, an accident that occurred Patients were brought in, the very serious ones, we took them in. The man that was struggling to save himself, by the time the people succeeded in calming him down, the man has already gone down. So by the time we are through with our theater, we came out and saw that the man had passed on. I've also handled quite a few number 
that were referred early. And they remain my friend for a long time. Because once they came in and we did that, they normalized before we now had time to, to stabilize and do other procedures. So these emergency measures are very, very important in, uh, in management of cases. And next stabilization is one area that we must always pay attention to. Because we may have an incomplete spinal cord injury. By the time we are forcing the patient behind the back of a, of a vehicle, then will complete the injury. These bites are quite interesting because the bite of the nose, the bite of the lips, the bite of the ears, and uh, the fight will end. Unfortunately, sometimes it is the person who has come to separate the fight that uh, gets uh, <laughs> beaten. We're looking at uh, the face, you can see the number of muscles acting on the face alone. I just brought this out to show the various uh, muscles of facial expression. So, and the way you are going to walk, you need to pay attention to all these. The, on the right side, you are seeing the skin tension lines, which you must also respect as you are doing your case. Now, we have this familial cleft. This is a family. The woman had a cleft palate, isolated cleft palate, because the face was well formed, wasn't identified. She had a son who also had a cleft palate, and they've been managing because uh, the speech is not good enough. They're managing their life until they now had this baby who had cleft lip and palate. So usually, when the lip is involved, diagnosis is early, but when it's the isolated palate, it's usually late. So we had quite a number of adults. This is another patient with Vanda Wilson. The man had cleft lip and palate. Lucky lip was repaired. He didn't bother with the palate. The daughter also came down with the same and they now had to, when the daughter got to the point of uh, knowing herself and how she looks, they now sought uh, attention. Now, this baby came early, the one on the left side, the next slide, had his rip I repay early, has done very well with the lip, came back for palate. Now contrast that with the other side, where you have one with that prolabium projecting far above the lip. They did not come early, but on, beside it is one that presented early, who had similar problem, bilateral cleft lip and palate. The lip has been repaired early, and you will never identify that you ever had that uh, problem. So when they come early, the result is usually very, very encouraging. But when they come late, it's not as good. And we encourage people to, that's a pre-op and a post-op of one of the cases we recently, for lip, uh, for palate. Now, other things that we meet in our course of our work, we have a benign lesion there, keloid. And um, we've handled it. This is another area where people need to be very careful because they talk, take it as any other tumor and go and annoy, annoy, annoy the tumor. And within one year, it comes far worse than what they came with. Uh, so usually we handle that with the mind of knowing its uh, recurrent nature. And even at the time we are doing the primary surgery, we take precautions to reduce that. That's a, a facial tumor, a malignant tumor. Here again, we need to be careful how we handle this. Because for tumor surgery, you must give enough allowance, if I use that word. You must extend far beyond the margin of the tumor that you can feel to be able to do a complete excision. When you do that, you leave a very wide defect. Many people, for fear of how am I going to reconstruct this defect, just go and do a small thing and again annoy the tumor. So, but here, since we know that we can move tissues from one part of the body to the other, we've done a wide local excision and raised the flap to reconstruct the mouth. So on that, uh, uh, on the left side, you can see that the face looks normal. The lip is well formed. Even after that switch part was uh, excised. This is a road traffic accident who came with complete abortion of the mid face and the upper lips. And uh, we were able to reconstruct her the right side is the outcome. The other one there is human bite to the lip. 
uh, was fighting with uh, a friend, if I'll use that word, and uh, <laughs> more than half of the lip was uh, what <laughs> collected, and uh, we had to restore her back to normal. But sometimes when you finish your work, they even look finer. And when I ask them to now pay for the aesthetic surgery, they refuse. <laughs> Now, we have a lot of work, like my friend told you, I was alone in the plastic surgery unit of uh, Numbers Way University Church to Nail with for over 10 years. So I was on call every day of my life. Even when I travel for conferences, I'll be answering calls and uh, giving instructions. So because we are still uh, not many, source specialization is still very difficult in our environment. And source specialization is what drives the key development. If I'm dealing with only the lips, I'll continue to improve on that. But when you run from head to toe, it's difficult. We're also very poorly remunerated in Nigeria and also poorly appreciated. These are not helping matters at all. Because one should expect me to be rich, but I'm not. <laughs> the people here are yet to capture hunger. So they are still hungry. They are still looking for just do let me just go functional deformity. Uh, only very few are interested in your beautification surgery. And it is in that beautification surgery that they are able to pay because those ones have captured hunger. So they want to live uh, better lives. And uh, there is still poor knowledge of our scope and availability. That also makes referral uh, a challenge. I want to say this because it's critical. We need to have a bond center in Anambra State. I've been singing this message for years on end. We don't have a bond center in Anambra State. We don't have any established bond unit. Yes, when I became a consultant, I was given a unit under the surgery. It's still a unit, nothing attached to it, no office. You will be walking from head, but your office with your car. And uh, there's no ward where you admit your bond patients. That is very bad because these bone patients are managed in the same open space like others. That one cannot be the same. We end up referring most of the major cases to Enugu. Sometimes they send them back to us and say, I have trained you to go there and develop the place. So I have presented this at several conferences, pleading with uh, both NGOs, governments, I've discussed with the, the CMDs of the teaching hospitals, both teachers in Anambra State to think about a way of developing a bond center where we have special provision for the bond patients. Incidentally, one of the, my products, Dr. C. Guzo, that went to FMC over, has uh, gotten a building as a bond unit. So I think that we can do better in Anambra State. The Smile Train, I attracted Smile Train to Teaching Hospital in 2009. In fact, on graduation, I started liaising with them two years after they came and assessed and the credentials to enter the, the hospital. But they will usually come in from uh, US, from other parts of the world to assess the facilities on ground. And that's one of the things that attracted me and has sustained me in Smile Train because they pay attention to the quality of surgery. They believe that what is done to a person in Nigeria should be the same thing as the one in US. And they take safety as a priority. And uh, that has been, uh, one of my motivation to be there. Since then, we have performed over 400 different types of surgeries, free of charge to the patients. In fact, some of them, we even give them transport money to go back to where they are coming from. We have currently two designated centers in Anambra State, Teaching Hospital Newe and Dema Special Hospital Newe, to be able to meet up with the demands. Because like I said, one of the impediments, again, we have is that we don't have a dedicated theater for cleft cases. So they still join the rest of the patients. So to improve our services, another hospital was also accredited and that has helped us to improve our services. They have supplied the equipment, they have helped in training of over 30 personnel, surgeons, physician anesthetists, nurse anesthetists, pediatricians, uh, preoperative nurses, ward nurses, CSSD nurses, instrument technicians, speech therapists, dietitians, community mobilizers, to be able to offer the comprehensive cleft care, which is what we now offer at the teaching hospital. So when the patient comes in, malnourished, 
when they have pallets, they have feeding problems. We start early to help them to feed and walk them up, feed for surgery. When we repair this, the repair the pallet, they are still going to have problems with speech. So we push them over to speech therapies. As they grow, if they have other problems, we handle that. And these are free of charge. The wife of the governor of the state, uh, Mrs. Willie Obiano, partnered with us in her cafe and uh, has started, help, started helping us with awareness creation. The ABS Radio TV, okay, I also uh, thank them for their services. I also thank the Cali Communications, NEWI, that also gave us a space to advertise uh, this free surgery in their newspaper. And uh, that has helped create awareness in the state. In fact, the wife of the governor was awarded the cleft ambassador by Smile Train some years back, based on the work that uh, we are doing. We have actually visited every nook and cranny of Anambra State carrying this awareness campaign. We've visited places like Nzam. In fact, the day I visited Nzam was, uh, the rain season was about to start and uh, it was not an easy journey at all. But then we are impressed when we got there. We visited all those places to carry out the campaign. And uh, quite a number of uh, the people are appreciative. In fact, I can say that in this area of cleft lip repair, is the area where I have performed most life transforming surgeries that will continue to give me joy all the days of my life. Because you see this child that has been brought in bilateral cleft lip and palate looking like a monster. The parents are depressed. In the next hour or two, you bring the baby out completely transformed and you see the joy in their faces. So when mothers are delivered of babies with cleft lip and palate, the joy of having a new baby immediately turns to sorrow. Immediately turns to sorrow. In fact, even after years, if you ask the woman, have you gone for Thanksgiving? So how can I take this child for Thanksgiving? And I had a patient that was coming, getting appointments. I asked, well, I said, doctor, please help me do this case now. You know what I said? I said, that's how I want. Said, Every day I'm coming to the hospital. I usually chatter a keke alone to carry the child, to hide the child, so that nobody will see the child until I get to the hospital. After review, I do the same and go back. They feel very, very uncomfortable. Of course, blame and counter accusation of who is responsible in our environment. So the depression, distress, and family disputes that follow is usually unimaginable. But once this surgery is done, all these changes, the battered face of Nigeria. Our country, Nigeria, needs restructuring and reconstruction. Adequate planning, like the plastic surgeons do, before carrying out their surgeries, is key to a successful reconstructive outcome of this country, Nigeria. Nigeria needs plan the reconstruction for meaningful societal change. Those of us in academia need to identify people with reconstructed minds and sponsor them into, that, into the political world. Because you can't do anything without the politicians. They are the ones that control whatever you do. As we are back on strike, uh, is on strike now because of what the government has failed to do. But if you have people there, definitely things will change. The fact that some people disappointed in the past should not discourage us. These associations can pull resources together and sponsor some people into this. And that's my recommendation if we are going to, to get there. 2023 is around the corner and we can strategize now. But politicians are getting jittery and they are against reforming the electoral law because they are, they are afraid of losing their grip. Uh, but the past and state election has shown us that we can actually do it. Proper orientation and a reorientation of the minds of our children and the youths. Very, very important. Yahoo, Yahoo, lottery, drugs, ritual claims have taken over. We cannot despair. We must have to do something about that. When we were young, our parents used their horse whips and cane to <laughs> get us to follow the rules. Now the cane has been removed from our hands as parents. So we must devise new means of getting the children to fall in line. So counseling, both at home and in the school, must start early. From the time they are breastfeeding and continue until their minds are properly set. People caught cheating 
or in other crimes should be punished and the children should see that there is a price to pay for doing the wrong thing and that will help us. But the situation where criminals are allowed to roam the streets only encourages more to join them. In the university system, I think we can do more than we are doing presently. We have, the university has set the pace, but I think others should join this. The methods of administering examinations and assessments in schools and universities should be modified and constructively improved upon to encourage hard work. While working with uh, Father Gage in the School of General Studies, we transformed the GS into something else. From registration process to the examination to the release of results, everything got that computerized. So when the common issue of a missing results stopped altogether, harassment stopped altogether, the lecturers know that they don't have control over the score of the students. So everyone faced their work. Some universities came to copy that. Brother Gage of is here, is my boss. Thank you, Father. So I think that if we do that for all first year and second year courses, the minds of the students will be reconstructed such that they now believe that whatever you are doing is what you get. They now start removing their mind from sorting and even sexual harassment of the lecturers to get marks. Once they get that, then their minds and their abilities and weaknesses can be identified early and they can be helped. We do that a lot in the medical school. When the students are performing poorly, we sit them down and cancel them and see where their weaknesses are and see how we can help them. And at the postgraduate level, we also do that. People may choose to be a surgeon because they like surgeons, but when the, he comes, he will see that he can't do that. We can advise him on another area that may be better for him. Again, the minds of the lecturers also need to be reset from lord and master to mentor mode. Because once we remove their control of what the student will get, they will now start facing their work squarely. When university graduates begin to believe in themselves, the society will gradually be transformed and constructed. So we can deploy technology in very all these uh, areas. Civil service also need to be reconstructed. And those, even after leaving office, should be able to answer for their crimes while in office. We need to build strong institutions if we are going to get society better. So we can say that the plastic surgeon in Nigeria is faced with a myriad of problems, just like the myriad of problems facing his country in Nigeria. But we are not giving up, so we can't give up on Nigeria. The face is a very unique part of the body and the window to the whole body. So reconstructive surgeries of the face require careful planning and meticulous execution to achieve optimal results. To reconstruct Nigeria, the special case of the plastic surgeon is needed. Humility to accept that we have a serious problem of moral decadence. We must accept that we are in trouble in this country. Ingenuity to think outside the box and devise new approaches. In fact, that's what we do. We don't have any defined most times when you get down, we spend more time planning on the surgery to do than we even uh, spend executing the, the surgery. And we can change, we almost have option B as we are going into our work. We must have patience. We must have made, pay particular attention to details and we must believe in God who is the maker of all things. Allow me to thank the almighty God my great provider, protector, and promoter. It's the sin hand in everything I do and achieve. Not on sin hand, it's the sin hand. I want to thank again my parents, especially my late father. He's not here physically, but he's here spiritually. My mother is here. I want to thank her for finding time to come. And my siblings. Uh, Hygienus is here, Engineer Hygienus, uh, Asan Dubisi, uh, one like Valentine, and the rest. Some are married and are with their husbands and cannot come here. I thank you all. For my parents, they remain my role models. I'm not sure that I got half of their humility, resilience, strength, and love of neighbor. I just hope that I can grow to get up to half of uh, 
these qualities. My father was a pioneer of this university and I indeed played the trick that took me into medicine. I still respect that. My wife, Dr. Rebecca Chinyo Chukwanuku is here. It's a special gift to me. Oh, Chinyo Mia. And I can say that anywhere. This is a pair of measurable value, simply priceless. Maybe people will not understand this, but I'm sure my friend there don't understand this because from school, we know how we handled ourselves. Actually, we are a group that really tried to put ourselves in the cage and prevented people from coming in to... Truly, the day I set my eyes on her, 25th December 2000, yeah, 2000, it's still very clear in my mind, the circumstances. My mind immediately settled that I have found my wife. And it can only be God that made the union. I married with complete trust in God and it has paid off. Many of my friends wondered why I would just see a person and say I'm going to marry her and go ahead to marry her. But once I saw her, I said, no, I have found my wife. So all resistances, I had to break all blockages and to ensure that this uh, was achieved. Thank you again for being there for me all the time. My children, Kamsi Ochuku, I think she's having a lecture now. She will soon join us. Uh, Dado Chuku is here. I saw when he came in, he's there, just admitted into medicine. My daughter is uh, reading law here. Kachi Siku is in far away Abuja. He called yesterday to express his, uh, uh, his uh, joy that this is going to happen. And Chim Kike is here. He was picked up this morning. Yeah, he's there from the school. You are a wonderful gift from God to us, and we are blessed to be your parents. My siblings have recognized you and their families. My parents in love, Chief Patrick and Mrs. Rose Argenta, they are here. They are always there for me, always there for me. The prayers, the constant support, truly priceless, honestly. My siblings in love, Emeka is in Abuja, but they're all, uh, Joined, they all joined uh, virtually. The former, the wife, Uche, and Dixon, Dix, the husband, Chidubim. Uh, Kezia is here. I saw him. He's there trying to help to capture what we are doing today. And their families. Nancy, Dr. Nancy is busy as a psychiatrist, so she's busy in a, was trained by my chairman here. You are simply the best. My late uncle and the family, I still pay homage to what he did for me. But he hadn't carried me on the back. By the time I walked all the distances, maybe I would have fell off. And uh, <laughs> many children were abandoned by their parents during the Civil War to save their own lives. My family, one Mr. Noba at Obasi, we called him Amin. He bought a textbook of pediatrics in my fourth MBBS. And I never forgot, 1,000 naira at that time. My salaries could not buy back that for me. And I still remember that. I thank all of them, Rumo Abbasi family. The people of Umaku, they've all been good to me. Other family members, many people played roles in my career, and I want to appreciate all. Hi, to my amiable Vice Chancellor, sir. Professor Charles Okechuko Simone. Words alone cannot express my gratitude to you. That is the truth of the matter. But you're always in my prayers and that of my family. So that God, who knows how to reward, it's only God that can reward you. We know human being can. And we want to encourage you to continue being fair to all concerned. To continue being fair. In your position, it is difficult, but that fairness distinguishes the leader and endears him to his people. The other members of university management, DVC admin, DVC academics, uh, the director of academic planning, the registrar, the, the bossa, and the rest, the director of information, I thank you all. To Asu, I pay homage to Asu, and to Asu Nayu, and the leadership. The Nigerian Medical Association, the Medical and Dental Association of Nigeria, especially thanks goes to my prayer group, Catholic Cosmetic Renewal of Nigeria, not the Newe and the Marco. They have been the source of my strength. 
and I want to especially thank you for your prayers. So my colleagues in the Nogale Lecture Committee, especially our chairman, Professor Richard Ngoakwe, uh, Professor Ifor Mainwan is here, and uh, the others, Esquire. Thank you very much for your support and team spirit. It's not been easy. Deciding who will take this slot was not an easy thing at all. And um, I can tell you that by the time this decision was taken, I had less than three weeks to, to prepare. But he said, you must do it. I told him, I, I say, you must do it. Too. You can't run away from it. You must, this place cannot be wasted. And um, I took it up. So thank you again for the encouragement. It's uh, not uh, to my colleagues. I have thanked you, a special and a unique brother. Second point, committee of friends. Nan Naigwe, my good friend, not in the country now. Again, UNISIC Medis alumni, we need to thank them for what they are doing. By the next Senate, I'm sure the Dean will chronicle all the things they have done recently to present. Because all the things that are relating to the hospital, the hospital is like our laboratory. Uh, so it's for training of medical students as well. My colleagues in the Department of Surgery, I thank them. Many of them are here. You can see Dr. Nduku and the rest. They called me earlier, and many of them are here. Dr. Chemelia is here too. Thank you all. Dr. Lilo, I want to thank you for Dr. Victor Mordepe, Dr. Wangko. Dr. Wangko is a, my second product as a plastic surgeon. And since he joined me, he has uh, helped me a lot. In fact, if I had been alone, I wouldn't have been able to present this lecture. Dr. Chimo BC Guzda, I mentioned him, my first product. He's now in Nowhere and is heading a big bone and plastic unit there. Because he was given a space, they gave me a whole building and say, take the whole building and manage these cases. And that has helped me a lot. So I hope that we'll be able to achieve that in Anambra State. Dr. Uchine Dilo Kanono joined me after 10 years of being alone. And at least my call day is reduced to half of the year rather than the whole year. So our late provost, College of Health Sciences, who is also a special friend of mine, we were together in anatomy and formed a bond, big bond. And uh, he was so close to me, Professor Demezwe. My former co-deputy director at the School of General Studies, Professor Ngoza Adreka, we worked together with Fadal Gejo for like a family, like a family. Mr. Wajago in anatomy was so good to us. Most of the dissections we do, identifying the muscles, identifying the differences, he will always be there using his hand and guiding. All these people are late now. And I say, may their souls continue to rest in peace. Amen. To all my teachers, they are so numerous. I can't, can't, can't name all of them. Please permit me to just say all my teachers. Stanley Ume, Dr. Stanley Ume, resident, doing his posting under me now, helped me when I was preparing this. And of course, my wife made sure that I presented this to always on my neck and uh, putting the fine things to it. I would have simply gone ahead to do my surgery and go, but she always says, you must remember you are a plastic surgeon and uh, always add that aspect to it. The ICT unit, I thank you all. The Smile Train, I must thank them specially. The Smile Train charity, only God can reward you for all you are doing for less privileged. They have paid for over, over two million surgeries in Nigeria, free of charge. They have credentials hospitals in all the political zones. From the person that started it, to our own Kiru Kobi, they are wonderful. The Mass Specialist Hospital and the Smile Train family in Anambra State. I thank all these people again. I thank my teachers, I will not fail to mention Professor Frank Chinedu Akwaka. He would have been here in person because there is a uh, uh, mass going on for our departed colleague, another of my teacher, Dr. Chesona, is in Kou Toka now. But he taught me anatomy. I still remember anatomy he taught me and also taught me plastic surgery. Has remained a great mentor up till today. He's a huge man with a large heart. I want to thank him again. 
All my teachers, Professor Mbono would have been here too, but he's in Lagos now for a national assignment. Professor Abata, Ele Ngobodo Unekwe, Anyangu, that mentored me and handed over the journal to me. I want to thank him. The special advisor to the Senior special advisor to the wife of the governor on my train, I saw when she came in, Amake Zike. She helps to coordinate the activities of my train on the cafe. You are welcome, and we thank you. Professor Rakwe facilitated my doing my posting at Enugu. It was not easy that time. It was a very bold attempt, a very bold step I took in my life to sponsor myself to do that senior residency training in plastic surgery. But I'm happy that today has paid off. Professor Pia Isoka would have been here too, but the change of time. Professor Aheneku, former Vice Chancellor, I thank you too. He appointed me Deputy Director, where I now learned a lot from Father Gage of and also HOD of Anesthesiology, Professor Ike Chibladema, AME14, BUO, OK Ikeze, MC Mosu, and the rest. Too numerous to mention, honestly. Many people contribute to making me what I am today, and I appreciate you all. My special friend again, Professor Gerard Udiwe, I want to thank you again and your wife. I want to thank my dean. I want to thank members of the College of Health Sciences who are here and those who joined online. Many of them joined online. I told them that it's not a physical presentation, so that's why many are not here. I also recognize especially those that challenged me in many ways, because I met a lot of hurdles while, while growing. Indeed, those challenges helped to strengthen me to break new grounds. I bear no grudge to anyone at all that may have offended me one way or the other. I forgive all, and I thank God that those challenges helped to get me to where I am today. My teachers at Nohe, I recognize them. Especially group, a special group, Mac Professional Forum, and the great sons and daughters of Mac. I thank you all for what you are doing to promote that town and sustain its values. Finally, I want to thank this audience who made this day great for me. Thank you, and thank you, and thank you. Thank you very much. The 71st inaugural lecturer. Of course, one thing is certain that uh, we've learned something today that by the virtue of this inaugural lecture today that there will be a facial construction, the construction and the restructuring of the face of our nation, Nigeria. It's on this note, I want to now invite uh, the, the chair, uh, I want to invite the Vice Chancellor for the collection of this 71st inaugural lecture. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, having successfully delivered the 71st inaugural lecture of Namda Zikiwe University Oka, I kindly request you, sir, to, in the presence of this audience, our virtual audience, recognize him and decorate him accordingly. This is, sir. Thank you very much. I most excitedly wish to decorate the 71st inaugural lecturer of our great university, Professor T.O.G. Chukwanuku, for uh, delivering a very wonderful lecture. And on behalf of our Senate, on behalf of our council, on behalf of congregation of this great university, I so decorate you publicly as a 71st inaugural lecturer of Namda Zico University. Thank you very much. Uh, while the VC and the same first inaugural lecture, I take uh, the photograph. After now, we're going straight away to the closing, uh, to the vote of times. And after which, we'll do the next one. Thank you very much.
May we please invite the chairman of the inaugural lecture committee, Professor Richard Wawatka, to please give us the closing remarks. You mean the vote of thanks? <laughs> Only the VC who gave the opening remarks can give closing remarks. I want to first of all thank the Almighty for making today possible. It's an unusual day in our tradition of inaugural lecture. In a special way, the inaugural lecturer has thanked everybody. But I must always mention the massive support we get from the vice chancellor. Otherwise, this will not hold. We've had challenges over time. But when we meet him, even at the latest hour, we always have a way, the VC always has a way of coming to our aid. Thank you very much, sir. And may God continue to guide and bless you and your administration and your family. We pray for you all the time. It will be well with you in Jesus' name. We thank the audience for making time to be here. We want to assure everybody that we are in harmony with everyone. We do not quarrel with anybody. We do not discontinence everybody. But we look at ourselves as a family, just as the Apostle Paul said, the body is one. And no part of the body we say it is more important than the other. So we walk, we want to walk as a family. We thank everybody. He has always, I mean, mentioned everybody. There is no need. But uh, permit me to specifically single out uh, Mama Chukwu Anuku. Neibia, Aishi Makobia Shishi Enugu. Oh, she ain't no good, she ain't no good. But I didn't make her talk, but I'm a good job, baby. And then, 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 Thank you. Why you not say anything? Jackie, no say anything. Jackie, no say anything. So on that note, we want to call on Associate Professor Eloilo for a closing prayer. We have a number of um, activities, Mr. Avisi, sir. We are currently facing NUC accreditation. So the, the Faculty of Medicine is quite uh, busy. The university convocation is also at hand. So there are a number of uh, activities. We will not be able to make announcement now of the next inaugural lecture because of these activities. When things are harmonized, we are done with the uh, MDCN uh, accreditation and the convocation, then we'll be able to know how next. So as a tradition, we are not in a position at this point in time. We want to harmonize all these university activities. Then we will announce the next uh, inaugural lecturer. So thank you very much, everybody. And uh, we hand over to Eloilo for a closing prayer, after which we will recess in the reverse order. Ilo. Thank you, Chairman. Vice Chancellor and the House, please, can we stand? In the spirit of the excitement of the day, as the first Medizik to deliver this inaugural lecture, permit me to take this song. All the glory must be to the Lord. Only Him is worthy of a worthy of a praise. No man on earth should be glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord. We pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you very much for a day like this. We thank you 
because we made it possible for our brother, friend, colleague to deliver his lectures smoothly without any problem. We thank you for the journey message you granted to the people that travel from far and near. We thank you for the audience that is virtual. We thank you for the audience that is present here. We thank you for what you are doing in this great university through our vice chancellor. We pray that you that laid that project 200 vision in his heart will make him to accomplish it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, God, even as we go back to our different destinations. Give us journey messages. Let us go and serve you to the glory of God. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Thank you very much. Any music anthem. <laughs> The session now will be in the reverse order, the VC first, and then others follow.